welcome to Wanda's Work Basket. Once again, I have a sneak peek for you from the folks at Diamond Art Club. I will put the, right down below here, I will put the date that it will be coming out. I think I can finish it for you so that you can see it finished as well. So I'm looking forward to this. It's a small one. I don't think I've ever gotten one this small before. It looks so cute. So cute. It is a square Diamond Art Club kit. It is called For um, All for Love. All for Love and Love for All. It is, it, you know, my hippie heart is going crazy. Okay, I had um, the book, the box came a little bit damaged, but what's on the inside is not damaged. I just had to um, get it there for you. And I wanted to point out all the places that you can get a discount on Diamond Art Club kits. The first one being, if it's your very first Diamond Art Club purchase, you can go to my affiliate link down in the description box below. And you can get 15% off right away by clicking that link. I get a tiny little bit of percentage back, but um, it's more important that you get 15% off. You can get other places 10% uh, discount, like on here. There's a Scan Me right on the side here. And that's for a 10% off coupon as well. <clears throat> and couple other places as I pull all the goodies out here. <laughs> I got a new toolkit! Yay! Yep. Okay, I'm going to move this to the side. On the bottom of the packing slip, believe it or not, if you look way down here, there is a code the packing slip that comes in the box. That code is for 15% off right in there. Just wanted to show that to you. And wrapped around the drills you will find another place that has a discount on the little thank you booklet. So you can see there's a couple more scan me's for 10% off and for the, the Diamond Art Club app. Not too many people are talking about that, but I got to tell you, uh, oh, that's 20% off of your first purchase from the app. It's cool. Um, if you're not at home, you put the app on your phone, okay? And if you're not at home and when the new things come out and you have to have the kit right away, uh, and you can't be right next to your computer, download the app onto your phone. And there you go. It's already waiting for you. It'll they'll text you when new things come out. You can read your emails that way, and you know, you know, you know, um, that you can pick it up that way. On the bottom of the instruction sheet, it has a thank you 10. That's for 10% off there. But of course, you can get 20% off through your first order from the app. Okay. Now, I'm going to show you these goodies methodically here. So, first, <clears throat> this is the picture of the kit. <laughs> it's a little hard to see in this light, but it says all for one. <laughs> it would help you if I put it right side up, right? Okay, I may make the mistake so you don't have to. It's All for Love by Denarius, D-I-N-A-R-I-E-S, by Denarius. It's 35 by 35, which is a, which is a 13 inch square. Okay. <clears throat> this is a better picture, if you can see it without the glare. It has 14 colors and it's a square shape and each of the the little pieces here are good to put on a bag or a container that you're going to kit up in that you're going to put the individual little dr diamond drills in as you work it and this one as you may notice 
if you can see it well has only 14 colors but of those 14 colors one two three four five six six are a b's because they're under the number 150 for diamond art club six a b's in a 14 color item <laughs> love it love it love it let's see where they all come in okay i want to show you a brand the brand new toolkit not every um, kit comes with the new toolkits kit yet. This one happens to. We get a brilliant pink tweezers because it's a square, you get tweezers. They are the super sharp tweezers. And it's fun to have them pink and it has a Diamond Art Club branding on it. A bag of baggies. It comes with a little heart container with two heart wax and it comes with the lid too so cute when you use the wax don't forget to take off the piece of plastic from the top and bottom of one of these only use one at a time okay it comes with a clear pen this one comes with a clear pen with a yellow squeezy I love yellow my favorite color and for the other end of that, you get, uh, rattle, 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 here it comes, there's a seven placer and a four placer that you put on the opposite end, because you can only get one on this one. The tray now has little golden flecks in it, and it comes with this awesome thing this awesome stopper. Now the more you use the trays, I've been using one um, for the uh, from one of the other ones I'm doing, the more you use them, which means the more you slide the little pin in and out, the looser it'll get, but it's still, I'm on my, um, oh, I've done a big portion of my um, Josephine Wall mystery kit and I still, it's still working very well on the end. It hasn't come loose yet. In the new kits, you also get a roll of washi tape. And I'll show you right now what I'm going to use the washi tape for as I start this. And you get a cover minder. This one happens to be a black rose. You get them at random. And it has an extra magnet on the back, to be sure. And I'll show you how to use that as well. I'm going to show you the overall canvas first. Okay, try to show it to you without much glare. All for love and love for all. There's a rainbow of colors behind the um, behind the heart. At the bottom of the kit, it tells you the dimensions. So it's 13 inch square, 33 by 33 centimeters. It's by uh, Donarius, as I said, and it gives you a thumbnail. And on the very bottom, it also gives you links to their uh, social media. I believe the last discount is down here. Let's see. Um, yes, take 10. Take 10% off of your next kit. It also has a guarantee, a full guarantee, that if something should go wrong, if the kit, um, if for some reason the kit isn't sticky, which it is, it's plenty sticky, if it's damaged in any way from um, shipping or whatever, if it didn't have part of the kit in it, if it, if the stickers aren't working right, if your drills aren't coming out um, the way they're supposed to, uh, anything that's wrong with it, even if you, you know what, even if you spill one of the drills and say, uh-oh, <laughs> where did they go? Honestly, they will replace those items for you. Uh, let's see, so... I want to show you first the drills and I'm going to show you what I use the washi tape for because I'm going to quickly whip up this kit so that I can show you it finished at the end of this video. Okay, so the packet of drills also has the name of the kit and their inventory number on it. I'm going to bring you in just a little bit here so I can show you the color of the drills. Okay, here we go. 
We have a lot of the 5200 white because that's going to be around the background. That is not one of the ABs. Okay, we have a lot of 310 black. That will be most of the all the writing in the middle. And these ABs are phenomenal. Let's see. I have a. I'll show you the back side of it so you can see. The green. Ooh, there we go. The green and the yellow are ABs, Aurora Borealis. That means they have a special sparkle to them. We've got the peachy orange and a light blue. Those are plain drills. We have a plain purple. And we also have an AB, like a lavender AB color. That'll be beautiful. We have a red pink AB. A plain fuchsia. An orange AB. An orange plain. And a dark blue plain. And like a dusty, like a cornflower blue AB. So let's see on the canvas where those ABs are going to go. Number ones are all in the background here. I'm going to put you out just a little bit so you can see the whole canvas here. Yeah. The number ones are in this stripe here. That's an AB. The number twos are a lavender. They're in here. Number threes are a light green. It's this light green across the top. Four is yellow. That's across the bottom. E is the orange that's across here. And uh, the squiggly looks like a number 12 laying on its side. That is a light blue. Now where are they? Oh, they're in the middle here. They're in the darker layer in the middle here. So the rainbow is going to be... Um, it's not in rainbow order, which would be red, yellow, orange green, blue, purple. It doesn't matter. I love this color scheme the way it is. Um, so you have a mix of plain drills and sparkly drills inside, highlighting the black text surrounded in white. And you know what I'm going to do with this? I'm going to put it on a white stretched canvas. Uh, this is 13 by 13, but I think I'm going to put it on a 12 by 12 just to... Um, I can make it on a 12 by 12, but wrap the edges a little bit. That's perfect. That is the perfect edge. Okay, what I'm going to do with the washi tape that comes with it, I'm going to peel back the part of the um, plastic cover. It's poured glue. And I am going to, whoopsie, it says here in fine print. I'm going to try not to rip it. Let me start it again here. Okay. This is how I begin my canvases. Okay. The reason you want to do the reason you want to do the um, washi tape along the edges is so that everything stays nice and straight right along the edge when you do this. And sometimes the adhesive might go over the edge a little bit. It doesn't seem to on these kits, but sometimes they do. And when you put the washi tape on, it keeps the edges clean so that hairs don't stick to it. If you have a pet in the house, um, or if you happen to have long hair like me and it all kind of decides it wants to let loose and you have these hairs stuck to your canvas. It happens to me sometimes. Okay. All right, that's one side. I'm going to do up all four sides like that. And pull back the plastic. You line her up. you all today. I really like it that Diamond Art Club is coming out with smaller canvases. They're more affordable for some 
they are they can be done quickly more quickly they can are better for beginners this would be a great beginner one the only thing that I wish that they would do however is when you have a B's in a kit which most kits are coming out with the Aurora Borealis drills that they also include a plastic tip let me see if I have one sitting here yes that they include a plastic tip on the end um, it's easy it, it's one of the extra um, tips that you can get I like that because it doesn't scratch the ABs it doesn't scratch the rhinestones or anything like that I also use a pen a wax pen it's just wax it's like a wax pencil you scrape off the end to make it sticky it's a little harder than normal sticky but also it picks them up easily and it doesn't leave any marks on it I love that I have been <clears throat> more often than not I have been using tweezers to put on my drills and I like doing that now. I can pick up two at a time if I need to. And it puts it on very straight, especially along the outside edges. Some people don't like uh, square drills. This would be a great kit if you have never done square drills before and want to try them. This would be wonderful. And I'll show you in a minute. I might start one here while we're doing it. Okay. One more edge. All right, one more edge here. All right, right along that black edge. Oh, for some reason. Oh no, I see. It did get along the edge. It's just that this edge is white of the tape, and it looked like I was off the edge for a bit, and I'm not. It's right on the edge, but it's, yeah, very cool. <laughs> I like this taper on the outside edge. Very pretty for this. It's random. You, you know, you don't get to choose the color washi tape. They just put it in at random. You don't get to choose the um, cover minder, which is fine. You don't need to be choosy about that. <laughs> Okay, so I'm going to get my little drill cup out here. I'm going to take my scissors once I find it. There we go. All right. I'm going to take a white. Now, it doesn't matter where you start. If you start on an outside edge, on an inside edge. Um, if it's a lar very large one, I have different ways of doing it. But I'm going to start at the bottom left. I'm right-handed, but I like this plastic cover. Some people don't, and that's fine. But I happen to like the plastic cover. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take the 5200, which is the pure white, cut a corner on it, pour a bunch in here, and the rest I'm going to put in the baggie. But first I'm going to find the sticker that says 5200 on it. I'm going to put it right on the bag, right on the little baggie. I'll pour the rest of the white in here. This is kind of kidding up, but you know, you don't have to do all of them at once. I think with a small kit this size, I do one color all the way through, pretty much, and then I'll do another color all the way through. And that, that way, the extras are already labeled. 
as well. And I only open one thing at a time. All right. I'm going to pull the cover back. I'm going to be doing this sideways so you can see it. But I'm going to bring it in a little bit more. Okay. Can you see that? I'm going to pull the cover back. The way you do the cover minder is you put the one disc underneath it and clip the cover minder on top of it and it will hold this plastic back for you. See? Um, what I like to do as well is with mine, I, I, um, if you buy one of my cover minders from my Etsy site, Wanda's Work Basket at Etsy.com, I have um, put discs, larger discs on the back of mine. So they aren't magnetized, but they give you a bigger area to shoot for. <laughs> they give you a bigger area to clip it on because, just because. Okay, now the way you start is you shake the drills in the tray. And I love that Diamond Art Club has these deep ridges in their tray, deep enough so that it really connects. You shake them a little bit until they... You don't have to get all of them lined up and straight as you're doing it. Just enough. I've got to make sure I'm still in the picture. Gosh. Okay. I'm going to start with this. I'll show you both ways, but I'm going to start with this. What I like to do is pick up one and find the corner. Where are you, corner? I'm going to put it as close to squared off as I can. And I like to kind of like push it down a little bit. You can pick up two at a time with the tweezers and put them down that way. And make sure that they're in tight and straight. Okay, I'm going to do that. The thing is with this, with the tweezers, you don't have to squeeze. When you're picking them up, you don't have to squeeze. You just barely touch them on the edges. If you squeeze them, they'll go and they'll fling all over the place. Like you just saw a couple of them pop through. So can you see what I'm doing? I've gotten the corner done. <clears throat> okay. All right, I make sure it's squared in the square space. I'm going to go up several and then over several. Okay. All right. I like doing the tweezer again because it squares things off. It gets them more accurately in the place that they need to be. Um, if you have trouble with with squares, that's usually the, the biggest problem that people say they have, <clears throat> is getting them to line up securely and squarely. Now this tweezer is neat. The older ones have more spring in them, but they're also wider apart, so it takes more force to, to keep squeezing them together. This is perfect for one. Perfect to pick up one. Yeah, nice. All right, now another technique. I mean, you can keep filling it in like this if you want to. You can start filling in. It's not right side up. I'm going to start filling it in now. Okay. I'm going to do a little bit like this. I'm going to show you another technique on how to do these big color blocking areas. Perhaps the most boring uh, part of a diamond painting is color blocking and probably why I prefer confetti over anything. But this is a wonderful little kit. See how nice and, and square they're getting? How nice and tight in the corner they're getting? Okay, so now what I want to do, I can keep going like this and do the whole thing like this, but another technique 
is you do every other one. Especially with tweezers sometimes, this is just fine. You do every other one and um, in that way you are more guaranteed that you're getting them on the right square. The problem with putting them right bumped up against each other is because you have these the little middle ends of the tweezers have to open somehow. The jaws have to open a little bit to let it go, right? And if you're putting it, bumping it up close against another one, it's a little more difficult to open the jaws. If you're doing it every other one, you don't have to worry about that. You just worry about getting it centered in that block as best you can over top of the faint square grid. Okay. I neglected to say that I knew this was white, number one, because of the picture, and number two, because this symbol, this little dot, is on the... Um, I'll show you this way, is on the chart on the side. Here you go. It's on the chart on the side, the one at the very bottom, 5200 white, and that's what I matched it to. Now you guys that are advanced, you know, diamond painters already know this, but since this is an awesome kit for beginners, I am doing a beginning lesson here. All right. So, you're going to say, all right, Wanda, I get it. You've got a checkerboard going there. How do you fill in the rest? I will show you. I would still go all the way up along the side, uh, one at a time. One, whoops, one right after another. Well, that's one way you could do it. But I'm going to do a little bit more here. My goodness, are you all ready for spring to start coming? It's probably not coming to your neck of the woods just yet, though, huh? It's not coming to Pennsylvania that quick. Um, I'm doing this, starting this in the end of February, so I don't know if March has come in like a lion or in like a lamb and go out the opposite way, but... Um, I don't know. I'm hoping it would be nice if it came in like a lamb and left like a lamb for a change, but that's not why we have that rhyme, huh? I hope it's not miserable weather where you are. I hope it's pleasant, that you feel the warmth in the wind that's coming. You can tell it's going to be spring, even if it's cold, if it's a warm wind that kind of like passes over you. You can tell in the fall when it's turned to winter, when you feel the cool in the wind. Okay, so here's my my uh, square, squared off end here. All right, and you can see I'm working on Come on, you. Get over there where you need to be. I'm doing this without a light box. This one, I don't think I need a light box for. It is that well printed. Okay. Some people ask, you know, do I need to seal these things after um, after they're done? Will the, any of the diamonds fall off? Well, I've never had any Diamond Art Club diamonds fall off. I've had them fall off of other kits before, but not Diamond Art Club. And of course, I'm not... Um, I'm not rough with them either. Alright, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the wax now. Take the heart cover off of both edges of it here. Come on, you. There is enough wax in here to do the whole kit. More than. I mean, you probably don't even need a full one. Alright, I'm going to stuff it in there where it goes. I'm going to take my 
pen and jam it in there. Can I twist a hole? Do it twice or so. And make sure that it's full but not overflowing. There's a dimple in the end of this. And that dimple will fill up with, with goop. Okay. Okay. All right, that's too full. Okay. I know when it's full enough is when I put it against the plastic only and twist it, and it comes out clean. All right. So what I'm going to do is take the, the pen and pick up the drill and pop them in between the ones I just had. So I am filling in the rest of the um, checkerboard. This pink stuff really doesn't leave much of a residue. If it st sticks between there a little bit, I just pull it out with the tweezers. It usually means I have too much on my in my pen, which is not a problem when I use my tweezers most of the time now. But for a big a big canvas, <laughs> it would kill my hand if I used tweezers exclusively for like six or eight hours on end, you know? I have too much goop in here. Okay. Alright. There we go. It's coming out nice. You can sometimes hear a snap. A little snap. You're putting the flat side down against the canvas and you're leaving the rounded side up. Okay. I'll give you a close-up of this square, even closer, so you can see how a checkerboard comes out, and then I'll show you how to use a multi-placer. All right. I will lift this to you. See how nice and even they are? Yep. You know, you can always, you know, adjust them here or there. This comes under a lot of scrutiny because they're right in the uh, close-up. All right. So, get your realign down here again. The next thing I want to do is I'm going to put my four placer on the end. I love four placers. Love them, love them, love them. All right, so I'm going to take my four placer and fill that up. I only need it once. Okay. Now, since there's a nice and even in the tray here, you see that? I take the edge of it and put it on the edge of these four at a time here. Okay? And they're nice and lined up because I push them up against the edge of the, um, the row here that ridge in the middle. Then I'm going to take them and set it down on one side and rock it forward. And I'm going to nudge the ones that are decided to move around a little bit. See? That's the four. Can you see that? That four right there? I'm going to do it again. Okay. I'm going to take my pen this last four, I'm going to push it on it sideways so you can see some of the the edge of so you can see some of the edge of the uh, drills there. I'm going to put it in place on one edge and then I'm going to rock it forward and I'm going to make sure they stayed in line. What do you think? Did they stay in line? I think they did. Okay. Now, sometimes if you do it the same way and you're always doing four, always doing four, always doing four, 
you're going to get what looks like break points. It's going to look like you did four all the way up and then another four all the way up and another four. All... You need to stagger those as well. So I'm going to show you again. I'm going to push another four here. Okay. I'm going to take it and I'm going to stagger it some. Yeah. Come down here. And I, you know, I mess with these the ways I do it all the time. Um, doing this on the side here now. That was three. Okay. Do it from back here. I do it a different way. I don't do four by four by four like the checkerboard. But I'll do like four and I move over two. And I'll do another four and I'll move over two. Things like that. In that way. Okay. Oop. And if you miss it, you just knock them off and start over again. Okay. Now I'm going to leave two and I'm going to go in between those. So that two of them are forced in between, and I have an open edge for two. You can do it that way. There's plenty of ways that you can do that. Okay. You can leave four in between things. If you want. Okay. Yep, a fifth one clung on there. But it stayed fine here. Okay. You, know, you just push them a little bit back into place if they're a little nudged. And then I would go back and fill in the two with the single placer. You, you just leave gaps here and there, and you go back and fill in the gaps here and there. And that way, it doesn't look like you have these ridges that you put them in by four by four. I'll show you that more up close as well. Can you see? You can't tell where I started and stopped. And it's still pretty, um, pretty straight. One in here, I'm going to push around a little bit, but, but that'll, that'll give. Okay. So that's how you do it. You just continue on. I will continue on until I get up into the, um, up into the colors. I'll probably do mostly all of the white, at least in the bottom section. When I get bored of the white, then I'll start in with the black probably, and then fill in the colors last. So that's what I'm going to do. I wanted to show you just the basics, just the beginnings of how you can start your diamond painting. This is a great one for beginners like I said, and I wish you lots of luck and happiness with this kit. I think you're going to enjoy it. I think you're going to enjoy it. Even beginners. So, there we go. <laughs> I'm doing that through the plastic and it's still working. All right, divas. I will add to this video when I get a lot more done. If I have more tips, I will add them in the middle and then I'll show you it all finished. So you will see a Diamond Art Club kit from beginning to end. That's cool. I'm excited about that. Okay. I'll see you later. Be back in a jiffy. Bye. Edit one. 
I just wanted to show you what this looked like with the outside edges done. I have the white finished all the way around the outside edge. You can see I still need to do the center. Yep, you can see the difference there. I did all the white first because it's kind of like the boring part, so to speak, and I thought I wanted to get that done. I even did on the inside, uh, and I still, I just wanted to let you know that I still have a bunch of, of drills. Uh, it did get into the fourth packet of white, but I didn't need all of them, so that's there. And I just want to, like, you know, share a little bit of my day with you, that kind of thing. Um, while I do a little bit more, I'm going to start on the green up here. And to do that, I will first, I check the chart, and it's 122, and it is the, um, the green ABs. And for the ABs, I like to use my wax tool so it doesn't scratch and poke and whatever. I also use the uh, tweezers for it. So I found the 122. I'm going to dump it all into the dish. Yeah, okay, here we go. The static does not like me here. These are really pretty. So. <clears throat> so March the 12th is the, t the day that this goes up for sale on the Diamond Art Club site. Okay, that's Saturday, March the 12th. I don't have a confirmation on the times yet, so I'm not going to tell you the times immediately. All right, now I'm going to go back and look for the number three on the label chart. Pull off the label, put it on here. So when I finish and I have extra left over, I'll put it back in the little baggie. All right now I'm going to pull you in a bit. See if I can uh, get you in here so we can work along together a bit. <coughs> I'm going to use the cover liner, pull this back, click it somewhere underneath there so I can keep the cover in the back. Then I'm going to start off using my tweezers, and I really had a lot of fun uh, doing this the whole outline, every other one, you know, the uh, checkerboard style. I had a lot of fun doing it that way. And you can see it's really nice and, and squared off around the edges. I really like the way it came out. Um, it does take a little more time than I normally like to, to take on it, but I, it's worth it. Uh, when the drills are this nice, when the kits are this nice, it's... It, it's worth it taking the time to get it done. All right, so you shake them up. And basically, these tweezers are really nice. The uh, Diamond Art Club tweezers that came with the kit, they open just wide enough to be to pick up one of them. Uh, two of them, it squeezed it too hard. But one of them, it worked perfectly. Now, the ones on the inside edge may slide in a little, but they won't stay out. You can just push them in a little bit as you're going around it. Uh, they do that because there's nothing holding them in tightly until they all go in the center of it. So, okay, like this edge is... I can't see the, the edge there, so I open it up, push it around a little bit, then get the drill in there in the right place and make sure it has enough room for the others around it. And as I start filling in the center ones on those, they'll start clicking into place very easily. And I took in some, some a little, little hand embroidery kits that I had 
that I showed you on one of the other um, videos recently. My counter cross stitch videos. I had some kits from elephants and owls, a little eyewear pocket, um, that kind of thing. I just I thought I would take them to work with me. But I didn't bring a thimble <laughs> or a little or a little scissors and silly me. I was there cut and thread with my teeth, which is no good. And <laughs> and my finger got sore from pushing the needle through the felt. I forgot to bring a thimble with me. Silly me. So when I go back on Saturday, I will do that. I don't believe anybody signed up for the second diamond painting class, the advanced one either. So I have lots more stuff to give away. Lots more. There's almost like a hundred diamond paintings there, small and large, that I can give away. Um, by the time you see this, I will have pulled the uh, March giveaway and pulled a name. If you want to be entered into the giveaways, go to the description box at the bottom of the screen, fill out the membership giveaway questionnaire, and then I'll know what kind of things you like. If your name is pulled, I'll know what to I will know what to send you. And believe me, I think I have something for everyone in my kits. I still have plenty if I want to teach a class. The um, craft is getting a little more popular lately. Oh, the other thing I wanted to show, tell you, there's something called a uh, tambour embroidery, French embroidery. It's with a little hook needle you like you put in and you twist up through uh, fabric and you can make lace from it. You can make uh, like beaded flowers and things. It's beading as well as embroidery and I got some sample hooks and I'm going to I sent away for a sample kit so that I would know how to do it. I watched some YouTube videos on it. I'm looking forward to trying that new craft at some point. I haven't gotten them in the mail yet, so on Ash Wednesday. Um, we were, my culture was Pennsylvania Dutch, um, is thinking about getting their Foss knots yesterday. <laughs> They're donuts. <laughs> They're potato donuts. <laughs> and it, it's funny because you're supposed to use up the the fat, the lard, the sugar, and everything before you start fasting on Ash Wednesday throughout Lent. So one way that they used up uh, the fat and the sugar before Lent started was to make these donuts, pan-fried donuts. And now it's just become a tradition, and, you know, they say, oh, if you don't eat them, you'll get lousy this year. <laughs> so, that's the silly part, but it's kind of neat. You know, I stick to some of my Pennsylvania Dutch ancestor, you know, the traditions, because they're fun. Like New Year's Day, we have pork and sauerkraut for good luck for the new year. This past year, I did not get it. I did not get my pork and sauerkraut. So I thought, if I missed my donuts too, I'm really going to be poorly off. <laughs> so my mom came to the rescue with that. And my whole family sat down and had pizza together. My 
son and daughter, my mom and her boyfriend, my grandkids, my husband and I, we all sat down to a pizza dinner and fast knots last night. So that was fun. And my granddaughter, my mom and I, we uh, sat down and did part of a, a puzzle. 300 piece puzzle last night that the kids gave to them for their Christmas present. My mom and, and her boyfriend, Max, they they do puzzles. They sit and do puzzles when they are together in the evening watching TV. And our generation was taught to keep your hands busy while you're watching TV or anything else. If your body's not doing anything, your hands got to be busy. So, I guess that's why I got so much hand work done as a kid. Because I was supposed to sit there without a book to read or without something in my hand to do. So. Idle hands are the devil's playthings. Did you ever hear that? That's old folk wisdom. I'm sure it's going to be stunning when it's finished. Can you feel a little bit of spring in the air? Here in the East Coast at this time, again, the time I'm taping this, we have a we had beautiful weather. We had almost 50 degrees today. Sunny, bright. It just felt so warm when we went outside on my way to work this afternoon. I know it's not going to last, though. I want to enjoy these beautiful days, though, while I we still have them. I want to get out and walk more. I know I said that before. I say that pretty much every year. Pretty soon I'll be making uh, the spring uh, the spring cover minders that have the pots of wax. They're actually pots of wax that you can keep on on your canvas, just like the regular cover minder. But they're little pots of wax with the fancy thing on them. And they're going to have a spring scent. I think it's orange blossom that I'm going to put as the scent on the spring ones. So they'll be up in my Etsy shop soon. You know, if you're into scrapbooking or journaling or that kind of thing, don't forget to check out my kits. I would like to sell those too. I might put them on Facebook Marketplace. But I have a bunch of kits that I would like to sell. They've been up for a while now. So if you're into journaling, stamping, um, scrapbooking, smash booking, I have at least 20 kits that are up there for sale. I have lots of cover minders that I've created. And I have those pots of wax cover minders. I like them because it keeps your little, your wax right where you're working on it, right? Do I have one over here that I can show you if you haven't seen them? thought I had one over here. Yeah, 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 yeah. Here's one. That was a winter one. I have to fix it. Well, not fix it. It just was over there on the pile. It got rubbed off. But I have some felt on the inside. So this one, the winter one, smell like peppermint. And they have blue wax, just like the pink wax, only it's blue. It's in a like a wax tub and it's got a magnet on the back and I give you a disc to put on the back too so it's also a cover minder I love the way it just holds it real close and you always have your uh, your wax handy you don't have to go fumbling for it while you're in the midst of doing your goodie 
whoops, I shot that one. You really don't need any pressure on them. You just barely have to hold them in place. The minute you start squeezing too hard, you it flips. If you've been wondering what's become of the interviews, when am I going to do the vine, video, blah, the video interviews that I promised? I they are upcoming. I still need to practice. I'm I'm not sure I know how to do them well enough, and I guess I won't ever be sure of it until I practice it for a bit. But I just with work and everything, I just haven't had the chance to do that. Now that Lent has started, I'm just I'm not sure I'm going to be able to. In the meantime, um, you may want to go down to the bottom and if you want to help support the giveaways, the postage for the giveaways, you can buy me a coffee, buy me a cup of tea, air quotes. Uh, there's a link down there in the description if you'd like to help out with postage for the giveaways. I'm hoping to get to a thousand subscribers. Help me get to a thousand subscribers by telling someone else to sign up and um, to sign up for the giveaways. Let them know that they'll that right now it's every other month but soon I'm just gonna go right to monthly and I'll have a huge prize to give away when we get to a thousand subscribers. So the more the merrier. Send your friends over. For Diamond Art Club sneak peeks and unboxings of all kinds of different kinds of uh, kits. For what to do with your spare drills lots of fun ideas coming up. One, uh, one of our channel members sent me some pictures of what she did and it's awesome. So I want to share that soon too. Uh, I want to I want you the viewers to have a focus. We do have a Facebook group with Wanda's Work Basket just to, so that you know you can share pictures of what you're working on. It doesn't have to be Diamond Art Club. It can be uh, another company. Right now, I don't. I'm not part of any challenges like some of the other creators are. I'd like to be. Maybe some of us can come up with the Josephine Wall challenge. A mystical challenge. This is still my favorite way to relax. My favorite way to sort out the day. You know, it's like going from chaos to order because you're you're taking a whole bunch of drills and like pieces, bits and pieces of things, and putting them in an order so that they create something beautiful. Now I see I'm getting toward my glare here, so I'm going to go back. Now see, it looks like a waffle fabric. <laughs> you can see I've done every other one in there. I'm going to go back and fill it in. And what I'm going to use for this is a wax pencil. I have wax pencils on my Etsy shop. Two of them. <clears throat> And uh, I like using that because it doesn't leave any residue on the drill. It gets it right in there where it belongs. Oh, it should. Come on, you. See, that one went right in. The other one that didn't go in because I didn't have it lined up correctly. Yep. I make the mistakes so you don't have to. And if they're not going in correctly, I just take the end of my tweezers and make sure they're popping in completely. There we go. That's another tip. I use the end of the tweezers. And the wax does not, that's on these wax pencils, 
does not uh, dull the Aurora Borealis, the shiny bits of it. So, it's another reason why I use it. For you sci-fi nerds out there, like my husband and I are, I uh, there's a series on, I think it's Amazon, Amazon Prime. It's called Upload, and it's really interesting. It's about, instead of dying, they when a person is terminal they can decide to, this is in the future, like a future utopia type thing they can upload their conscience, consciousness and their personality into these different communities that you pay for, that your relatives pay for some are expensive and some are not and um, it's how <laughs> how this one guy gets along. He was a web he was a game developer, some kind of app developer. Yeah, he was an app developer. And uh why isn't that one going in tightly? It's because it's all squeezed wrong here. There we go. Come on, get in there. There we go. Now I'm going to get that one in. Yeah, it's kind of fun. And uh, he's got a, a guide on the outside that if they need anything, they just talk to this guide. And he starts to like her. And there's this little kid there, and he, you know, gets him in trouble. And and it's about their glitches in the system, and they have like these round futuristic cars that you can that self-drive. And it's like, uh, you know, this is in the so-called real world, not the utopia, but. They can, you can even sleep or read or or um, <clears throat> have a romantic affair in the back seat of your car while it's driving you elsewhere. So that's kind of fun to think about. Some of these really neat things that they developed. Some are really neat. Some are really gross. <laughs> that I could see happening in the future that would be really fun to have in the future. What would you like to see in the future? If you could invent something, what would be a great benefit to the future? To a future you? What would you like to see happen? Oops. You know, I keep thinking, I want to live to at least, you know, like 110, because I'm too nosy. I want to know what's going on out in the world, all these developments that happen, and new technologies, and I want to see us cure global warming, and, and back on that, and um, heal the land that we scarred so badly, and... I want to see endangered species preserved. I want to see um, more advances in technology. You know, 
more things that are by verbal command. Like a microwave with a verbal command on it. Nuke tea. <laughs> Um, a replicator, like is on Star Trek. All you have to do is talk to it, and it creates what you want. That I would love. What would be your futuristic desire? Okay. Oh, I love how nice and tight and straight these are coming out. Can I show it to you? Can you see it? You see the difference? 